In this video, we are discussing serializability and recoverability. This is a very interesting topic and very important also. So, along with the definitions, along with the concepts, we will be explaining along with the examples also. See, at first let us define a schedule, then we shall go for what is serial schedule, serializable schedule, non-serial schedule and so many other things. Okay, now schedule. A sequence of operations by a set of concurrent transactions that preserves the order of operations in each of the individual transactions. Whenever multiple transactions are operating, each and every transaction has got certain set of actions to be done. So, at which instant of time, which action, under which schedule, under which uh, transactions is going to get executed, that will be mapped along a time instant and that is known as a schedule. So, if the conception is not clear, let us go for one example. So, this is a schedule. You see two transactions are there T1 and T2. This transaction is having 1, 2, 3, 4, mainly 4 uh, actions are to be done, some read operations, some write operations. So, 4 operations or actions are to be done. So, it is being guided by begin transaction and commit. In between these particular brackets, these four operations are to be carried out. For T2, they are also having some operations to be carried out. So, it is also having begin transactions and commit transactions, these two brackets are there. And then we are having this uh, read balance x, write balance x, read balance y, write balance y and so on. So, this is a schedule because in between two transactions, the concurrent transactions, which operation has to be carried out at which time instant you are making a schedule of, out of it. So, this is known as a schedule. So, it has been described here. So, the sequence of operations by a set of concurrent transactions as we discuss in case of T1 and T2 that preserves the order of operations. These are the operations are to be carried out in, in each of the individual transactions. Now, let us go for the serial schedule. What is the serial schedule? A schedule where the operations of each transactions are executed consecutively without any interleaved operations from other transactions. So, in case of serial schedule, there will be no interleaving operations. If the conception is not clear, let us go for the example. Now, here you see this T1 and T2, you see after completion of total transaction of T1, the schedule of T1 and then the total transaction is getting done by 42 and that is no interleaving of any operations. So, this is known as a serial schedule. This is known as a serial schedule. That means concurrent transactions, but after completion of one transaction, another transaction is executing and that is no overlapping of their uh, execution span and that is no interleaving of any operations. Then you shall say that this particular transaction is of the type of serial schedule. This particular schedule is of the type of serial schedule. Now, let us go for the non-serial schedule. Is schedule the operations from a set of concurrent transactions are interleaved. Here the concurrent transactions are overlapping and operations are interleaved. So, as an example is it is better to go for this. So, here you see this is the total transaction. The transaction T1 is initiating at time instant T1 and it is getting terminated at time instant T9. Transaction T2 is getting initiated at T4 and getting terminated at T12. Obviously, their uh, time spans are overlapping and after completion of this operation, after interleaving this particular operations are taking place. So, this is known as a non-serial schedule. So, this is also another non-serial schedule. Here you see begin transaction, read balance x, write balance x, begin transaction, read balance x. 42 and 41 again read balance y 42 write balance x for t1 write balance y and commit and for t2 transaction read balance y write balance y and commit. So, this is a non serial schedule and this is my schedule s1 this is schedule s2 and this is schedule s3. Now, let us go for the serializable schedule. Now, what is the serializable schedule? The objective of serializability is to find non-serial schedules that allow transactions to execute concurrently without interfering one another and thereby produce a database state that could be produced 
by a serial execution. That means a non-serial schedule is serializable and correct if it produces same results as some serial execution. Let us suppose T1 and T2, T1 is initiating at time set T1 and T2 transaction is being initiated at time set T5, time instant set T5 and these two transactions are overlapping. Let us suppose consider this one. So, this transaction is initiating at T1, it is initiating at T4, it is getting terminated at T9, it is getting terminated at T12. So, these two transactions are overlapping and operations are interleaved. So, this particular non-serial schedule will be, will be called as serializable if they produce the output on the database same if they, if they are getting executed in a serial schedule fashion. That means, if, if you see T1 is T1 transition is initiated at first then T2 transition is initiated. So, similarly if T1 gets completed and if T2 gets completed. So, this serial schedule will produce the output if the output is same on the database by this non serial schedule also then this non serial schedule will be called as a serial eligible. So, let us suppose one student has come and during his particular study span he has got some job. Now, he is asking whether he should complete the study and then he should go for the job another job because this job will not be waiting for him or so otherwise should he continue this particular job along with his study. If that particular student asks me this particular question then my answer will be that if you do your study and then go for the job after that that means in a serial way if you are what about the score you are going to make in your exams if that score is same if the result is same with this non serial execution that means the study span is getting overlap with the job doing span. So, they are non serial. So, in this particular case if you are having the same result if there if your exam results are not getting affected you can go for your job. That means that non serial schedule will be known as the serial eligible if it produces a same output if those two transactions are forced to get executed in a serial schedule fashion. I think the conception is clear and whether a particular non serial schedule is serial eligible or not for this particular test we are having the other videos which is which will be coming next. Please watch all of them to have a concrete idea on this transaction management. Thanks for watching this one.